Well, welcome to the Sports on Pulse. I am Gary Alsmith, and tonight, red faced players on both sides of Manchester will be slagging it off for bragging rights in the Manchester Derby. And, well, we have something a bit different today. We'll be having a debate where one of my guests will be taking the side of the Red Devils and the other guests will be taking the side of the citizens. In England, we'll be having a guest from Skype to do the moderation for us, and that will be the pause today. So just sit tight and enjoy this debate. In the red corner is Kwekwahing. Uh, oh, you're in the blue corner. Blue corner. He's in the blue corner today. He is on the side of Manchester City, and he'll be doing that for us as well. I'll be introducing a man who is on the red side of Manchester. But first, let's go over to England and introduce our moderator for today. Andy Mitten, thank you very much for joining us. No problem. It's nice to be invited. Uh, yes, nice to be invited indeed. But give us an overview of what this match tonight means and especially coming into this game, what has been the story, Andy? Well, Manchester City have started the season better than United. United fans have been a, a little bit disappointed with the form under new manager, Jose Mourinho. I was at Stamford Bridge on Sunday, and it was a disaster. Manchester United lost 4-0. Uh, well, this game tonight against City represents a great chance for the team to get back and to get back on form, to raise the confidence, to raise the spirits, and also to avenge the Derby defeat at the start of September when Manchester City played very, very well at Old Trafford and, and won a game. That was a bit of a shock to the system for a lot of United fans because both teams had started the season so well. And since that Derby game, Manchester United have not been convincing. The fans have been disappointed because the team have spent a lot of money. They bought Paul Pogba, the world's most expensive player, and he's not really settled in yet. Manchester City's own form has dipped in the last couple of weeks after such an impressive start. So it's a big game tonight. The League Cup is the third most important competition in England, or the least important. But tonight's game is a sellout, 76,000 people. There'll be 8,000 Manchester City fans. And look, it's the Manchester derby. It's a huge match. OK, thank you very much, Andy. And you've set the tone for our debate today. And if you are just joining us, well, um, it's, it's a bit of a... Yeah. Let me just go to <laughs> Fifi Forsen. Yes, Fifi, thank yeah. you very much for joining us. Thanks for having Red me. Red side yeah. of Manchester. Fantastic. Blue side of Manchester. Don't, never mind that they are, they are in colours that are not <laughs> matching. And so just let's keep it that way. But you are for Man United. Looking at the way United have flopped yeah. in the run-up to this game, how do you see it? I think this is the perfect opportunity for Jose Mourinho to go out there and tell people I'm st I still have it because there have been doubts. Doubts have been raised about Mourinho. People say he's lost touch of reality. But I still think Mourinho has it and he still can prove himself today against Manchester City, Pep Guardiola. Pep Guardiola himself is on a winless run of five games, Kweku. And what would you say is the feeling for him ahead of this one? He's not an under much pressure as much as Jose is, but there's still pressure. Well, there's still pressure because he needs a star to click. We have a star, unlike someone from the red corner. He <laughs> <laughs> seems to know we, how we, to we play. Are still, we are still identifying the right star. So, we, so you can see obviously they are a confused club. Right, confused right club. from the onset, they are confused. We have our star, we know how we want to play. It's only a matter of time, we'll click. And I don't see any perfect place to click than at Old Trafford tonight. <laughs> we are going to batter them, we are going to outplay them, we are going to outclass them. For your, for your information, Jose Moreno has not lost to the same manager back to back. So you have but to But the thing about Jose Moreno this time is that the records he has had and held dear have been dropping like flies. But I think it will, it will not be the same tonight because I know Jose Moreno, after we go back to 2010 and after the game against Barcelona in the first leg in the group stage, yeah. that was at the camp. You know, he said, Barcelona, we are far from being Barcelona. But when I have the opportunity to play Barcelona again, I'll be ready. And he proved it. In a, in a semi-finals, the first leg, it's, it beat Barcelona 3-1. That should tell you, Jose Moreno cannot lose. He's not the type that will lose back-to-back. Back. Back. So you can, you can see what he's doing right from the onset <laughs> again. He's only making references to pass and the pass and Moreno. But the pass always turn. guides the future. If the pass guides the future, you should be in the top seat by now. You should be in the <laughs> driving seat. You should be on top of the league relaxing. But you can see that his pass is way behind him. He's now a flop. He doesn't know what he's about. Mm. He's confused. He doesn't know which players. He doesn't know the best system. He doesn't have his first 11. Can you tell me his first 11 right now? Of course. 
as I said earlier, Moreno is still identifying the right players to use. So you have to take time for him. The, obviously, obviously, people, people, Moreno coming in, people will say Manchester United has to be on the top, has to move from being seventh, fifth, or sixth position team to be a top four contender. But things are not going as planned. We have to relax. We have to give Moreno some time. I know Moreno is capable of turning things around. Andy, let me bring you in. You've heard the two sides, the red and blue sides. What is clear is that the ammunition City will be using against United is that Jose Mourinho is past it. He is in danger of losing his legacy, isn't he? I don't think you can say that for certain. So I don't think he's having a good time, but I wouldn't write off such a young manager who's been consistently successful um, right now. It's clearly a difficult time for Jose Mourinho, but it's a, it's a long season. The season's a quarter of the way gone. And while he's yet to convince, he's still a new manager. There are still new players in there. Of course, United fans would like it to have been much, much better. You know, it was awful at Stamford Bridge on Sunday. I can't pretend otherwise. But there's still a lot of good players there. And they need to improve their game too. It's not just about the manager. But tonight at Old Trafford, there's going to be 76,000 people there. The atmosphere will be fantastic. If United lose again, then we're talking of a deeper problem. We are talking because... about a deeper problem indeed. Andy, let me bring in my guys here. So, let's go into the players. How should the two teams be set up? Would you go with the same kind of gang mentality, mentality that Mourinho went against Liverpool with? Or else, should he risk playing Fellaini again and lose? I think this is time for Fellaini to be dropped to the bench because he's not proved himself. Forget about the game against Liverpool. The game against Liverpool, the whole, the entire team were disciplined. Yeah. That brought about a goalless draw. But I would say Fellaini should go to the bench and let's say Schneiderlin, I don't know if he's still a member of Mourinho's team. If he is still <laughs> a member, then he should be giving the nod today. It's a Carlin, it's a EFL Cup and yeah. some new players should be given the nod. Mkhitaryan also should come in. Forget about his flop performance against City in the last Premier League. But I think he can add some pace down the wings. That's what Manchester United have been lacking. Ashley Young should be given the nod once again. He was impressive against Liverpool and I, I believe he can do it once again. Lingard on the bench. Kweku, for Man City, the lineup is a bit more clear than for United. What would you say the starting eleven should be? No, we already know their, their weakness. We did it two weeks ago at Old Trafford. Kelechi Hinacho, he started one goal, one assist. It's going to be the continuous of that process again. Hinacho on top. Those behind him, they are going to provide enough flair, enough creativity. Manchester United are not mobile in midfield. So what you are going to do, you are going to drag their midfielders around. Michael Carrick is an old horse. Under Herrera is the only forceful <laughs> player, but we, we will play around them. We are good enough. We've got ball-playing players. We are, we are having a rough patch at the moment, but tonight is our night and we'll come good at Old Trafford. No, so if in an ideal situation, um, Fifi, who is representing Manchester United, what would you line up your team to look like? I think I'll stick with the familiar faces. It's Pogba who starts because he's not proven himself. Though I know Manchester City are making a host of changes. There's no David Silva, Fernandinho is off. And he's making a, a host of changes. But I, I will stick with Pogba and Ibrahimovic up front because we are playing home. And following the 4-0 defeat at Chelsea, we need to have a response. I don't care if the response is coming at the expense of Pep Guardiola going to the West record that has six games without a win. I want it, and yeah. I know I want Moreno to do that for me. That's it. Andy, bringing you in again, the big players have been mentioned by Fifi as, you know, being given a chance again to pro prove themselves. But for Paul Pogba and for Zlatan Ibrahimovic, really, they need to show that this is why they were brought to United. Yeah, they were. They cost a lot of money, and they were bought to decide the biggest games. And Zlatan Ibrahimovic now has not scored a goal for 500 minutes. That's his biggest goal drought for a decade. Paul Pogba has not imposed himself as the fans will hope. He had a good game last week against Fenerbahce, and he scored twice. One of them was a very good goal. He needs to do that not just against a big Turkish team, but against Manchester City, Chelsea, Liverpool. And he's not done that so far. United fans need for that to happen. Because when City played at Old Trafford at the start of September, David Silva and Kevin De Bruyne, they were outstanding. They were the best players on the pitch. They were a cut above anything Manchester United had in the first half, and that helped them towards winning the game. The United equivalents, the top paid players in the world, some of them, they must do better. They must do better indeed. So, finally, just to wrap it all up, um, at Old Trafford, the 
the formation that Guardiola will be using will be to drag United, like you said, on the um, on the wings. On the wings, and then we are going to exploit their middle parts. We are going to play the, no, our normal 4-3-3 and exploit their weakness in midfield. They don't have enough balance in the middle of the field. And I'm, I'm calling for Snyderlin, and if Snyderlin is back, I but know they will. Snyderlin is untested, and that may be a problem. Oh, but I think Snyderlin has some experience in the Premiership or in the F EFL experience, Cup. Experience, experience. The last time you met with experience, <laughs> your players couldn't pass, they couldn't move the ball. Experience that's doesn't that's count. That's what I said earlier, that when Mourinho lost to Guardiola in the group stage, he said, when I meet Guardiola next, I would be ready. So that's the point. Okay, <laughs> all right, for Kweku, you are Man City's man for today. Pep Guardiola himself is coming under criticism for trying to be too intelligent. We saw that at Barca. He did that and got away with it because of the kind of players he had. At City, he simply doesn't have players who are so technical. Why doesn't he do the simple things? Why does Guardiola always want to show that he's the smartest man in the room? You know, he always does that. Even at Bayern, his first season, he wanted to be too much tiki-taka. But in the second and third season, he reverted to a traditional German type of football. Yeah. Get the ball to Robin, get the ball to Ribery. So he's got to understand, he's got to feel with his system. And that's what he's understood, I'm sure. From and today. he keeps saying that in the press conferences, yes. to be fair. And he'll, he'll say that from today, he's going to make adjustments, he's going to tweak the system to adjust to Man City's strengths. And I'm, sh I'm sure he's going to do it. He's a fantastic manager and there's nothing beyond him. There's nothing beyond him. In terms of, for both of you, elite manager status right now, coming into this season, Pep was said to be the best manager in the world because of the way things were with Jose Mourinho at Chelsea. What's your verdict, Kweku, on... The battle between the two. Who is the best manager at the moment? I think head to head should speak for itself. And Guardiola is head and shoulders above Mourinho. They said no contest. Sir. No okay. contest. Yourself? Head to head. What's the head to head? Mourinho has won 23 titles. In how many years? Forget about the years. It, it matters. But it's 23 it years. No. It's ratio and proportion. You did your math. I've told you, forget about the years. He's won 23 titles. You have 21. In how many years? And you can't get to 23. Mourinho would definitely increase that number before you get to In how to many years? He started but coaching in 2004. I've told you to he's won forget. 23 titles in, since 2004. If, That's 12 if, years. If you have more, then I'll, I'll keep mute. But since you don't have okay, more. Okay, then let's have this conversation at the end of the season. When at we the have end of the season, <laughs> we'll have this conversation. Andy, finally, your predictions. Oof, that's a really, really hard question because my heart says Manchester United and my head says that City may be slight favourites. So 1-1 one, one after 90 minutes and I hope it's half as exciting as the last time the two teams met in the League Cup in 2010 in the semi-final. Two absolutely fantastic games and yeah, that's all you're getting from me. I'm not going to predict beyond that. <laughs> cool, cool. Predictions. 2-1 City. 2-1 City. Hmm, that's tight. 2-0 United. 2-0 United, he says. So those are the views of my panelists. Andy Mitten joining us from the UK United We Stand Football Editor. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Thank you, and it's great to see the passion. I need to come to Ghana to meet some of you people. Be here very soon. Kweku in the um, blue corner today for Manchester City, arguing the case for Pep Guardiola and the citizens. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Also, a knock Fifi forcing in the red corner today. Yes. A bit subdued because his manager is not clicking, yeah. but I'm sure he will be able to get it pretty soon. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Right, and so as we wait for Jose Mourinho, who, by the way, says that living in Manchester is a disaster. Don't forget that his family live in London. His daughter will be 20 next week. His son is 17, and he misses home. He says he has to use the applications to order for pizza and stuff. He doesn't really like it. Whatever it is, Pep Guardiola will also want to be getting the number over him in the EFL Cup tonight. Follow us on social media as we bring you live updates of that game at Joy Sports GH on Twitter, on Facebook at Joy Sports. And you can get the preview now on the sports page of myjoyline.com and afterwards get the results and the reaction there as well. Thanks for, for joining us on the debate section today on what we did on the Sports on Pulse. I'm Gary Al Smith. We'll be back soon.